Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to have a look at the package called Forest. It allows us to create very beautiful diagrams or trees, as you can see here on my screen. I'm going to take you through several examples and hopefully by the end of the video you will have a clear understanding how to use this package. Of course, during this video I'm not going to be able to cover everything. This package is very extensive and very well written, so I always recommend you to check their official documentation if you want to find out more. At the same time, I'm going to put all the code that I'm going to use in this video down in the video description. So just follow along with me, see what I'm doing, and then eventually you can copy and paste the code. Alternatively, you can just look at their package and copy the source code from there and learn new options and new features that I was not able to cover in this tutorial. So with this forest package, you can create a very complex diagram or forest like this one here that you can see on my screen. I'm going to try to show you basically everything, how to rotate items, how to color items, how to put a square or a circle around each number and how to arrange the um, diagram or the forest inside your LaTeX document. We're going to start with a basic example because we want to understand how this package works and what we need to do to get started and then we're going to see step by step how we can add additional features. At the end, hopefully, you will have an understanding on how to put together two features if you want to use them in your diagram in your paper. Let's see what we need to get started. Well, to get started is super simple. We just need the use package forest and we can just put it here in the preamble of our document. As you can see, I just have the document class article and begin document. No other packages are needed. Forest in the back end use the TIKZ package automatically, so we don't have to import that. We are not going to go through this example that I've used to generate this diagram here at the top because it's very complicated, especially for beginners. But we are going to start with a basic example. And let's have a look at this one and how we can create a simple diagram. Here in this basic example, we have one that is at the top of the diagram, that then it goes to two and three, two goes to six, and three goes to four and five. I'm using VS Code to automatically compile my LaTeX document here on my computer. And if you want to find out more how I'm using VS Code to compile a LaTeX document, check out my video on YouTube. I have also a lot of other videos on LaTeX that you may find interesting. So after this video, just go and check those videos because it may, they might be helpful for you, especially if you are a beginner for LaTeX. But I also have some advanced tutorials. So let's see how we can recreate this diagram. The first thing that we need to do is to start the begin environment. So here we can see begin, open curly braces, and we have to say forest. And then here on VS Code, I can press tab. This is going to create the end forest, which is necessary. And then inside here, we have to use square braces. With these square braces, we can define the first element at the top of our diagram. So let's see that VS Code is compiling for us. Here at the top, at the bottom, you can see build is building for us. And here we can see that we have our forest is appearing next to this basic example. So let me just comment out this forest that we had here. And then VS Code is going to compile the document for us. And then we're going to have the items. Inside the first square braces, which is our first element that we can see the number one here. Now we want to put two items. And one could be like even a string. So let's use the word ciao. And the second one could be a number. So in this case, we are going to put two. So now we'll see that one goes to ciao and then goes to two as soon as VS Code is compiling the document for us. Great. We can see that we're going to ciao and then we're going to two. Now, under ciao, we want to put two other elements. So we're going to put three 
And we use the same approach. We're going to put another square braces, and then we're going to put another square braces, which you say hello user. Then VS Code is compiling the document for us, and then here underneath ciao in our document, which is on the right, we are going to have the two element tree and hello user. The first thing that I want to show you is to how align children items because as you can see now the top element is at the top and then we have the two elements underneath ciao and two and then again this ciao is at the top and then we have the two elements like one on the left and one on the right but ciao is at, at the center of these two elements so i want to show you how you can align the children so here we have another example where the top element is LaTeX numeral. If you want to align the child's, we can use this command here. So after the element here at the top, we put comma, space, and this command here, this option here, which is CA line, which stands for children align. And then we're going to say first. In this case, we are going to have that Arabic since is the first child under LaTeX numeral is going to be the one that is going to appear exactly under LaTeX numeral. Of course, we are not limited to have the child aligned to first, but we can also specify center is going to be aligned in this case with Roman, or we can also pass last. So if we pass last in this case, we are going to have that the child align is going to be aligned with the last child. So in this case, it's going to be alf, alphanumeric. You can also have a little bit more options, which I'm not going to be able to just cover all of them right now. But for instance, you could also pass the option, which is fixed angles. And in this case, the angles of the line are going to be fixed. As you can see now, we have fixed angles among all the items, but in this case, it doesn't look very nice. So we're going to revert it to first. One thing that could be useful is to pass this option down the tree. Because here, as we saw before, we can have the child align and we can specify for each element. Of course, if we have a tree which has a lot of items, like in this example here, we don't want that for every element here we say C align first for Arabic, Roman and Alf. So how can we do that? Well, we can spa pass this for three. And this is going to be very useful because this pass our option to all the elements down inside the tree. And let's see how is, what is the resulting uh, um, diagram. Here we have LaTeX numeral. So we are saying child align first. So LaTeX numeral will be aligned with Arabic, but also Arabic will be aligned with its own child. And then it's going to be with one. If inside one, I decide to put two other element, let's say A and B, then we are going to have that Arabic itself is going to be aligned with one, and then it's going to be aligned with the letter A because the A is the first child under one. So here, as you can see, this option propagates down the tree. One thing that it could be very useful that I haven't shown you yet is how to center this diagram inside the center of the page, because at the moment we have the diagram that is left us aligned in the page, because this is the default behavior in LaTeX. That's super simple. We just have to say begin, and then just uh, an environment, and then we say begin center environment. And then inside here, we just have to put the forest. So let me just copy this forest here, the begin center environment. And now LaTeX is uh, compiling our document. Uh, we might get an error because we just started the compilation without having passed the begin forest. Just VS Code is auto compiling the document for us, so we might get just a small error, but it's going to be fixed automatically the second time it compiles the document again. And as you can see, now we have our diagram that is centered inside the, inside the page. So we have equal margin both on the left 
and on the right. And this, of course, you can use it for all the other uh, different diagrams in your paper. Another very nice thing that we can specify is the tier. So here we want to have that um, we have different branches in our diagram with different depth. So we have VP, DP, and then we have John. So this branch has only two steps, from VP to DP and then to John. This branch of the diagram has a different child, and then we end up with letter. But we want to make sure that all these elements are at the same height in our paper. How can we do that? Well, to each element that we want to have aligned, we can specify a tier. Okay? In this way, we are going to have that all the words that have the same tier are going to be aligned in our page. Okay, so here we say specify that John has the tier of word, sent has the tier of word, Mary, A, and then letter. So automatically, forest, the forest package, is aligning here in the page all the element for us. This, I think, is great because it's a very nice way just to have all the final element align, which makes it easier for the reader to just have a look. I'm going to show you later a conditional way of having this done programmatically, but we are going to have a look at it in a second. In the meantime, let me show you how we can use the TIKZ package, which is already imported in the backend from the forest package. So here there was just a small typo. I'm correcting it right now as uh, I'm talking. And then I'm going to show you how to add the decoration around the element of our um, diagram. So here we are starting with VP, but of course we can change the text. We can say one, two, three, it doesn't matter. And then here we want to change the appearance of this element. How can we do? Well, we can use the same approach that we learned before by passing options. So what do we want to do? We want to have it as a circle, okay? We want to be draw in red the outer border. We want to have the line width of 1.5 points and we want to have a fill of yellow. Of course, we can change all of these. So instead of circle, we can say draw. Instead of red, we can say, I don't know, black. Instead of line width, we can say 1.5, we can say 2.5. And then instead of yellow, we can say green. So. Now, VS Code is compiling our document for us, and we will see that uh, we can change completely the appearance as you prefer. Now, you can see that uh, it's a rectangle, it's green, a fill green, and then we have a thicker line on the outside. So let me just revert back because I think it looked a little bit better before. And here at the bottom, I show you that uh, we can just specify either rectangle or drop. So here DP, we actually can just have draw. We don't have to have also the rectangle option. We can say DP, and then we can say draw is going to draw a rectangle around the word DP. Then we have V, and then we have two sub-elements inside our diagram. This is just an example. One thing that I mentioned before that is very useful if you want to specify this type, this tier, more programmatically, so without having to pass it manually, because your diagram could be complex, so you just want to pass this automatically, is using functions inside the begin forest environment. Now, what do we need to do? We have to specify that the this tier will be programmatically associated to the zero at children, which is the last children. Let me show you. So the diagram is exactly the same as this one here that we had before. So I think by now you should be familiar with this type of diagram and what we wrote inside over here. The difference is that we want to get the last children and we want to assign this tier word. So everything is going to be aligned. Of course, we are not limited to align it to the last children, but we can say children one. So it's going to be the second uh, last. 
So we're going to have dp, v, dp, d, and np all align on the same line. Let's see the resulting uh, diagram. So here we are not going to be able to go a level higher because we only have dp at a level higher and uh, v. Uh, so in this case, we cannot uh, align it to a level higher. But this is, I think, is great because programmatically we can just uh, pass all that information. Another thing that uh, is very useful if you start using a lot of decorators is, uh, which are the same throughout your paper, is to have a preamble and set default option in the forest package. In order to do that, though, we will have to use forest set. And this is going to set default values throughout all our document. So for this reason, this is going to affect all the diagrams that are following this forest set. So let me comment out the last two diagrams that I have here on my screen. And let me uncomment this one here because I want to show you something very nice. So here we want to have the font of the first element in the forest is huge. And then we want to have that four tree inside the items are circle so they are surrounded by so all the elements in the chart are surrounded by a circle and then we draw the circle around so here we can see that we are specifying three forests one after each other they are appearing one next to each other because we didn't put a space in between these forests before we had one forest under each other because we had a space in between the line this is classic latex, so I didn't cover that before. But here now you can see that the second element is appearing below because we put a space. Alternatively, you can use also the two backslashes. So in this case, we get the same results and we get that the second forest was below the first one. But let's go back here because this is the important thing, is that we can set some defaults here and these are going to be passed to all the element inside our forest. If I don't set this default, then eventually I would have had to set inside every forest itself the font and then for tree, and then we have the circle and draw. So let me quickly show you. So here we have our just normal uh, diagram that we saw before. And as you can see here, we have four three dotted, but then of course uh, we didn't uh, say a uh, circle draw. So we can say circle and then we can say draw. So as you can see, this is what we want. It didn't change anything from before, uh, but the advantage is that we don't have to pass here inside uh, all the same option because we want that all the elements have a circle and they are drawn outside. So we just have to specify this forest set. Now I'm going to call, um, comment this out. And the reason why I'm going to comment this out is that if I don't comment this out, all these set are going to be applied to all the other forest that we have at the bottom. And they might not be compatible because the forest diagram may be too big. The last two things that I think are very useful, and there are, again, other things that uh, I would suggest you later on to have a look in their package, but I think these are the, the, the few more things that I think you must learn from this video, are how to uh, add lines that connect different elements inside the, in the diagram, and also how to change the layout of the diagram, because we don't always want to have the diagram which is vertical, but to save space or because we like it more, we may want it to have it horizontal. So let's go step by step and I'm going to show you how to add lines and how to add comments. So here, the, the first part of uh, the diagram itself uh, is just a basic diagram. So let me actually remove this section here and I just want to show you that uh, the first part uh, is just uh, a normal diagram where we have dots, here this is a latex notation just to have the three dots, and then here we have the option draw, that we saw it already before, to draw like just a rectangle around the DP. Now, with this way, 
while just using curly braces and the draw command followed by a semicolon, we can start drawing lines, okay? And in this case, we want to have a line with an end arrow. We want to have this line to be dotted. Here, I'm using the conventional notation of the T, I, K, Zeta package. And then we are saying two, where the line starts, south from out, southwest, okay? And in is in south, so it's going out from southwest here and going in into south. It starts from this element, okay, the last element, and then it's going in to an element called spec CP. And this spec CP we have named it here. We could also have named it like item one that will not have changed, and then we can say item one. Then here we should get the same result. The only thing that we need to make sure is that this unique key that we are using to define it, like this name here at the top, we are referencing here at the bottom. Okay, so I wouldn't even use maybe something with a space, I will just call it uh, item, or I could even call it uh, DP. Okay, using the same approach, we can also add, for instance, a, a comment here. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more complex. I'm not going to go everything into detail because this is more about the IKZ package. Now we're going to have uh, like uh, another type of uh, of, uh, of line, again with an arrow. In this case, we want to have it red, not dotted. It's going to be from the southeast start. And then here we are specifying the position. This is the text that we are going to pass inside the node. And then we are uh, anchoring the node here. I know that it's a bit more complex. I'm not going to go too much into detail about this. I'm planning to create a video about the IK Zeta package. But now I just want to show you the capability of this package that you can also embed nodes and arrows using the uh, TIK Zeta package. So it's very, very versatile. Finally, the last thing for this video is to show you how to change the layout of your diagram. To do that is pretty simple. The only thing that we need to do is pass again for three. So down to all the children of our chart. So we have to say grow apostrophe and then equal to zero. So we are going to have an horizontal grow. Here is as we did before. We have text, the first element that starts our diagram. And then here we have DP and then three and four, which are the other elements. So let me just arrange it like this. So it's uh, probably a little bit uh, easier to read them. Okay, so here we have the DP three and four elements and inside here we have Mary and we have test. You are not, uh, uh, you don't have to just have a diagram which is only vertically aligned or only horizontally aligned, but you can also have a mix of the two. So here we have the element one where the chart starts that goes down to two and three. But the element three, we want that it grows horizontally. So it has four and five. But inside two, we can also put six and seven. And these two elements are going to grow down vertically because we have not specified the growth option. So one, two, six and seven are going to be kind of going vertical in the alignment and then four and five are going to be horizontal so that gives you a lot of flexibility in how to uh, organize your diagram i really hope this video was informative if it was please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel is free you don't is very a small action for you but it makes a lot of change for my channel because it helps a lot with the youtube algorithm if you also value my time and you learn something from this video, please also consider supporting me either on Patreon or by buying me a coffee. More information down in the video description below. If you want to instead learn more about LaTeX, just check my LaTeX playlist on YouTube. I'm sure you will find a lot of material that could be useful for you. 
I have a lot of video on that, how to create tables, figures, how to use Py Python and LaTeX, how to export tables from Python and then import them in LaTeX, how to compile a document with VS Code or PyCharm, and I have a lot more videos. So just check my YouTube playlist, I'm sure you will find something useful. If you have any questions or any comments, or if you just enjoy the video, please also consider adding a comment down in the video description below, and I will try to answer your question as soon as possible. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you in the next video.